Hello, I'm so excited. Today we're gonna to be checking out a Lords of the Fallen uh, cinematic intro trailer. I'm actually super excited. I've seen a handful of clips from it um, for like the TV commercials that they were running. And it's always like, it's super dark, heavy Gothic feeling, um, but there's a full trailer and I'm super excited to uh, to dive into it. I'm always super inspired by dark fantasy and it seems like this is gonna scratch that itch. So let's, let's, uh, let's watch it together and then we can talk about it afterwards and see what inspires us. And hey, if it doesn't inspire us, I, well, I'll be surprised. So here, let's, let's give it a swing. Uh, it looks cool right out of the bat. Let's hit that space bar and we'll get rolling. After eons of tyranny, yeah. the demon god Adir was finally <gasps> overthrown by humanity. Though fear of his terrible power endured. That crying sound. Oh, it's so tight. And so was formed the hallowed sentinels. <sighs> Our duty being to stand vigil for signs of his I love this return. kind of lore. Even exiled to another realm, yeah, that's a hand. Silence the fallen god forever. And in time, Adir's malignant influence pervaded the world once more. Oh, she got that dark. In his magic. hunger for vengeance, Adir orchestrated the return <sighs> of his demonic army. Light was yep. swallowed by shadow. <gasps> oh, the giants. Hope. A new, grim champion arises. The dark. They got like nails in their forehead. This is sick. And perhaps it will indeed come to pass. This looks so but good. They who shun the light in order to fight the darkness possess the power to defy. Ooh, the handheld look. It's cool. Look at these. What are these designs? Oh. I don't know if the thing's flying. A lot of holes in the wing. Oh, this is disgusting. I feel like choir music is so tight. Okay. Got some lantern power here. Oh, uh, well, it didn't actually help him there. Oh, I thought that was the hero. All right. Sick. I like the tendril effect. That looks so sick. Man, this is some dark fantasy. All right. I uh, I do not know what any of this means. Is this part of the game or is this just the upload in another language? It's pretty hype though. Less models. That like drone sound effect in the background that's just slowly building. This is very sick. Car. Listen, you can't have a fantasy epic without a car. That's, I think that's where this is headed. You're just gonna come driving out in a Mustang and start crushing over the villains. Yeah, look at these environments. Not catch a break. We're like a hundred percent gonna have to talk about his helmet. Boris, forgive me. And steer this weapon of deliverance to a worthier servant than I. Oh, 
my gosh. That's such a cool shot. Uh. Dude. Okay. Okay. All right, we're talking about this. We're talking about this. There's so much right out of the gate. This goes so hard. This opening shot, are you kidding me? After Eon. Look at this opening shot. Of tyranny. There's so much going on here. There's so much detail. Because you notice the horses, and then as the camera pans over, then you're like, those are those are cool rock formations. And then it sort of dawns on you that like this is a hand just sticking right out of the ground, like a giant. That's so cool. Because there's so much happening in this scene. But what's also cool is they've done such a good job of layering. Um, you have all this distant fog and haze in the background. It's backlit. So you have very, very distinctive, very strong silhouettes. Like even when the horses come running in, you have like swords sticking out of the ground. Like everything's so silhouetted that you really have a strong indication of everything that you're looking at. Of this is a great Eons. sense of depth because you can tell like those mountains would take weeks to walk to. Like you can just tell that it's like that far away, but that it's so like the scale is so big. Um, and you have so much action kind of happening in the foreground too. With these guys here. helping each other up and standing. Very cool. I like how even in these aerial shots, they have a slight and wobble humanity. to them as though they're being filmed by like somebody in a helicopter like holding it holding a camera rather than just like a perfectly smooth drone shot it kind of keeps everything feeling a little uneasy fear of his terrible power endured. yeah this is so so cool yeah these like man it's cool because for these shots you can tell like that they're like that they're facing a really bright light they're very like uh, but they're not overexposed. It's really it's like a balance of making them look very bright, but you're not actually like crushing any of the white. So this is like a really effective shot. It makes their armor gleam like crazy. This is really cool. Of his yeah, look at these shots. This frames so nicely because they want a wide scale widescreen shot that really showcases um, this castle. Um, but you're framing it still by like the dark on the edges. You're still framing it with the dark uh, mountains here on the left and the right hand side which is awesome. It's a very just like natural framing. Um, so your eye is drawn right to the center, but you can still feel that grand scale like you're really pulled back really far. Even it's so cool. Oh, and then I guess that's that is it's pulled out far enough. You realize those aren't mountains that were framing that shot er earlier like this. You thought were mountains is actually uh, the fingers and the hands here. Oh, so cool. It has like a ring or something on. There's like an insignia on here. Yeah, that's so cool. Just the scale of it. It's so hard to establish scale, right? Because, you know, you don't know is how big this hand is, but they did a good job of like in this previous one, you see all these little trees that are growing on the right hand side. And so by the time you cut to the wide shot, you still see those trees. So your brain is like, oh, I know how big this is. To another realm could not silence. Yeah, all revenge, of these effects are really cool. The of I love that explosion. That explosion has so much meat to it because the the roof kind of uh, it doesn't just like blow aside in a boring way. It, it's almost like a bubble popping. Like you see pressure first, and then then it goes, and it just makes it feel they that much more abrasive. In his hunger for vengeance. A deer orchestrated yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's so sick. You actually see a little bit of a ripple first. A deer you see like the dust go up, um, like a ripple effect on this. This is so cool. And then it goes up. Yeah, that's tight. Of his demonic army. Light was once again, like this is really cool because you're getting so much information in one shot. It's only for like a second, but you're able to see so much depth and distance. It feels really far. You can tell how big this is, but you're also like instantly understanding what the threat is because you have the army walking one way, but you do have like you have him turned and face right towards the camera. So you get that that impact visually and your eye is drawn to him. They also put a like a red beam right behind him. So your eye is like naturally drawn over to this guy with like that nice red glow, um, really lighting him up from, from the scene naturally. And it's so cool. In order for light to hit him this hard from this red, arguably there should be a lot more red light in the scene. Um, but like if you were shooting this practically and what they probably did here is they had a virtual light very close to him that was projecting red onto him. Um, 
just to accentuate that. But you make the light invisible so that it's only um, it's only impacting him. But if you were to shoot this practically, I would just do the exact same thing. I would take a light and I would hide it right off camera, just right above him and pump him full of red light. Light was swallowed by shadow. These giants. And this is so cool. Hope. The scale, you know, they're moving at like half speed. So like you can really get a sense of like how big the scale is. And I love this like burning sun in the background is so, so cool. Like everything like, man, it really you really get rewarded for rewatching this because there's so many details going on here. A new grim I love this like arises. handheld walking with them, opening the door. Grim and it kind of looks like you can see. Man, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like maybe you can see the flesh. Like this armor looks like it might be just like directly onto his skin. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that is what that looks like, which is that's pretty gothic. That's pretty that's pretty dark. The dark crusade. Coming right into a fight. And perhaps it will oh, yeah. This is cool pass. stuff. I love that they're they're rocking the the uh, the handheld people. shot in a really cool Ready way. This is awesome. This is awesome because like as soon as you see this, you could tell that it's a real person that's been frozen in a stone. But the way he's walking up, you're like, oh, he's he's going to get stepped on. I like that it's like magical and it kind of like it doesn't just crumble to the ground and like it floats up and you realize that there's dark magic involved. Now, this shot is really cool because you can tell that there's like impending doom because like it's crawling over the mountain. It's not just a camera, just aimlessly going over a scene. It feels like you're looking through the eyes of a villain or something like that because it's kind of crawling. It has a, a jittery shake to it. So you can tell that, that that he's coming and then there's the reveal. So it's really cool. That's so cool because you're not just like, boom, here's the monster. You're showing, oh, something's coming up. You're seeing the POV. Then you get a close up of the hero reacting and looking up, which is hard to express because he just has just armor over his face, over his whole body. Um, man, yeah, I do think this is just flesh covered by armor on his hand there. But this helmet, I said I'd talk about it, is so sick. This like crown of thorns is made out of just like steel and the giant gouge in the front. Like you can tell he's been through like so much fighting. Like this guy has gone through it. Like you wouldn't want to get head headbutted by him. It's cool accented by this like subtle red light on the right hand side, just to make everything pop, just to give a little bit of uh, life to this image. It's so smart. And then this reveal is cool because you're like, oh, here's a big creature. It has three heads. And so immediately you're like, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. And then the payoff, boom, there's the wings, which of course, with that many holes in it, this thing is not going to be flying very well. But you know what? It's dark fantasy. We love to see it. Like this is this is what we, this is what we come here for. This right here. This this is such a good image. Oh, man, this stuff excites me. I love payoff shots like that. Do you just see something in its full terror? Sliding in. Yeah, that's, oh man, that's a really cool shot too. Seeing the way the mouth opens. Yeah, look how fierce this looks. You realize the scale of it. You can see the teeth, like this thing is bigger. You know, it, if, it, if it chomped onto him, it would have swallowed him whole. And that's really cool. You just, in that in this brief instant, you get an idea of like how massive this thing truly is. There's all this like black goo hanging off the teeth. This is crazy because this happens so fast, right? All of these details are kind of lost unless you really pause it. However, your brain is still registering it. I think that's a really big thing that you can always tell how much care was put into something when you're like, oh, you can freeze frame it and you see details absolutely everywhere. Even if you look at this pillar over the left hand side, there's like chips taking out of it. Like this is an aged pillar and it feels like so like something that sh almost shouldn't matter because to put that kind of detail in, but it does matter because your brain is like taking in everything. Even if you're only like concentrating on one main movement, oh, he's fighting, he's swinging a sword. It's like your brain is still, t you know, subtly taking in everything else that's happening on this, this page, you know, even adding, um, adding little spikes on all of the chains. These are things that once again, if you're not pausing, you're not noticing, but like add so much detail and depth to what's going on here. Now, this is so, so cool. Like every one of the, it looks like every single one of these teeth on this creature was placed like super intentionally and has a little story to tell just, just within the teeth. Yeah, this is all, all really cool stuff. This is an amazing villain reveal. 
It's got like four arms. Yeah. This action is actually really easy to follow. Like the the movements are powerful because they're slow. They, they are slower because they're powerful, I should say. Um, and that creates a really cool effect. You can just feel like boom, like every hit is like matters. I love how everything is still accented by this like subtle red light. Um, it just yeah, it makes it makes the image pop right off because otherwise everything is very gray, um, greenish gray. But whenever you have those like accents, it really makes it you understand what's happening. These are really cool effects. The tendrils are really cool. And I love I love this. This is like a classic thing where like the camera starts at one height and then the camera lowers as it's panning, you know, tilting up towards uh, towards the enemy. So it makes him look even taller than he is. Camera starts up top and as our hero's falling, it's going down. So you really, really get the sense of the scale. Makes him feel very imposing. All of it, man. This is so cool. I'm gonna skip ahead past all this text I don't understand. I'm disappointed we didn't get a car. I thought for sure we'd get a car. I'm sure I just booted up the uh, a different translation for this uh, for this trailer, but here we are. Car! I mean, they really set me up here. Very, very tragic. I love all this. Oh man, this shot right here. I'm such a sucker for silhouettes. I love silhouettes. And this looks gorgeous. All the layers of depth you can see, like hazy, like faint um, trees and buildings in the background, like like ancient like artifacts. And, um, and then up front is obviously super dark. Um, this, I would play a game like this that is just a side scroller that has this kind of energy. Like you look at this. How sick would that be if you had a game that was just a very dark, silhouetted, violent, um, but like still high end graphics, you know, not like an old school game, a new a, a new school game. Um, There's a side scroller would look so cool. If that exists, please let me know in the comments because I would love to check it out. Yeah, then all of this, this reveal, obviously it looks really tired. It's cool, like from a filmmaking challenge, it's, or from a filmmaking standpoint, it's a challenge, right? How do you make him look beat and weathered? Cause he just has the same armor on, but they're telegraphing it in all of his body movements. So they're doing a good job. Obviously you have the, the audio cues of him heavy breathing, but this is really well done. How his whole body just has like a little bit of like an off cadence, like, like breathing pattern. Yeah, a silhouetted dragon, just like you kind of catch a glimpse of it. That's so hype. And then where's this this final reveal is what I want to look at here. Yep. So creature comes back. And if I'm not mistaken, when this lands, you are seeing only two operating heads. And the one he chopped on the right looks like it's just hanging off like limp. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here, which is so, so sick. This creature's got three lives. Yeah. You got that red light back, which is cool because now you realize it's being like projected by the villain. This is such a strong profile shot. You really get to see the helmet in its full glory here, but like having that red light pump right on him. Yeah, and this villain is massive. So sick. Look at how cool this shot is. This I am such a sucker for silhouettes. This looks so sick. I would love to recreate something um, of this nature, like dark fantasy like this. It's just like a nice iconic um, silhouette like this. I mean, you could even, I don't think they're doing it. They're doing a slight pullback, but like <clears throat> you could, you could do a slight push in um, or even like, like a slight, like, like dolly and really get like the parallaxing of the stuff in the foreground versus the background. This is, yeah. And then you get that head chop off. Like this is so visceral and he's holding him up like nothing. Look how iconic this looks. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This is so cool. And it's a balance because like the red light emits and it needs to stay red light. You don't want it to like fall off into pink. So there is actually a little bit of a balance there trying to figure out exactly how to make it look just right so it doesn't look pink. So you have that strong blues, the strong reds. Uh, it's a really strong contrast. Yeah, that is. And then that's pretty much yeah. But that's this. This is very iconic. I think this and the creature spreading its wings are are the two the two best shots or my two favorite shots, I should say. Um, because they just, they tell so much of the story. They're very iconic. You could see that and remember exactly what trailer you were watching the second you see one of those shots. Um, this was really cool. Very, very inspiring. I love stuff like this. I, I am such a sucker for dark uh, fantasy. And like nobody, I, I shouldn't say nobody, 
it's rarely touched on in uh, filmmaking, you know, shows and movies. I feel like rarely touch on something this dark and gritty and grim um, in the fantasy realm because it's obviously very expensive. This is a huge undertaking, and I don't know if there's a big market for it. There is, it feels like in the gaming community, you know, people love to play Dark Souls and, and games that have like that really gritty dark feeling, but to have somebody roped along for a whole like two hour movie, it's a big ask. And so it's a, it's a lot of production value. It's a lot of armor and swords and shields and creatures you have to create. And um, I don't know, we haven't seen it done this heavy. We do touch on it a little bit with like Game of Thrones has some cool dragon moments, of course, but something like this is just pure Gothic, pure heavy metal, dark um, fantasy. Feels like it isn't really often touched on in the filmmaking. And so I love getting to watch stuff like this because you're like, yeah, this, not only does this exist, it should exist, and it works so well. So I don't know if this translates to a two-hour thing, but I love watching it as a trailer. This is so, so cool, so bleak, so, so metal. Yeah, um, absolutely love this. Let me know. Are there other Lords of Fallen um, cinematics that I should be checking out? I just I, I found this one and this this like this like legitimately has me so excited and so hyped. So if there's other ones, I'd love to know. Drop me a comment um, on anything else you'd like me to look at. But like this has inspired me to get out and to shoot and to create some scenes like th this genuinely has inspired me. I'm so excited about it. So I'm sure I'll see you around at the next one. And until then, have yourself a magical day. See ya.